everybody hope you guys can see me uh i'm popping in to talk to you guys for a quick quick minute so i can continue going about my day i hope everybody is having a great weekend so far i hope you guys are staying safe um I hope you had a great work week and that's pretty much it that's pretty much it so anyway you guys who are new here who don't know me i am kiki hey i am coming to you live from chicago illinois those of you who um are not familiar with me you may notice a link in my description to join my memberships i welcome all of you to do so because there are so many different topics and deeper things that i would like to discuss with you all and unfortunately everyone is not spiritually mature or just mature period where you can openly discuss certain things what i'm finding about a lot of people in the kingdom and there are some people who are not even in the kingdom they are overly spiritual overly religious and overly deep so any little thing that you do they are going to demonize it they are going to spiritualize it and i'm very very irritated and agitated by it because like i said um a lot of my messages that i deliver to you all is coming from experience now not all of my video messages uh are my experience a lot of video messages that I have done over the years, it did not come because of my personal experience. I've told you all this before. It's actually come because I've been able to observe and analyze the situations of other people. Or it's been a direct revelation from the Holy Spirit. And so that would be the inspiration behind messages I would deliver. But in some cases, it's just very um annoying because people are too deep and if you laugh if you crack a joke people will demonize it and spiritualize it i told you all let me make this announcement too before i get into the live um i told you all that i am a silly person not all the time not all the time i have a balance actually but i like to laugh i like to crack jokes um i like to have fun i'm not in the spirit 24 7 Nobody is walking in the spirit 24-7. God is not talking to you every single day, all day long, in large paragraphs, revealing everything to you. And if somebody is telling you that, they're a liar. Point blank, period. And so I don't care about anybody getting offended when I crack jokes or when I post jokes. Okay, so the woman... Because I'm going to give you a response because you guys like attention. Not everybody, but some people, they like attention when they make certain comments. You guys saw the post that I put up with um, talking about the Apple and it had like Michael Jackson in it. A woman came in the section of the comments and said, I'm disappointed in you. Is this the direction that your channel is going in? First of all, you obviously are not familiar with me because... With over 300 videos, one joke is posted. And this is something recently I just started doing it. I don't even think I've been doing it for a month. Or it might be touching on a month of me doing a chuckle post. Because everything is not deep and serious all the time. You're disappointed in me for simply cracking a joke. And so you make the assumption. You question me and ask, is this the direction of my platform? So you take... A meme that I posted and you make an assumption that this is the direction my entire platform is going in and you're disappointed in that you would have thought that I showed my breast you would have thought that I was twerking you would have thought I was smoking a blunt or cussing everybody out or out here fighting or I'm holding up a gun I just don't understand the overly deep people you all get have got to stop with this it is super annoying. Hey, Caribbean Queen. Hey, Toya. Hey, Vicky. Hey, Danny. Hey, all of you guys. Um, 
I just don't understand being overly deep. When you are in the kingdom of God, it's not a sin to crack a joke. It's not a sin to laugh. Stop demonizing and spiritualizing everything. I'm going to laugh. I'm going to crack jokes. I'm going to have fun and I'm going to post it on my platform. Nobody will or can regulate what I post. If you don't like what I post, if you don't like to laugh, if you think that me cracking a joke is not of God, unsubscribe now. So I don't want to spend a lot of time on that. But I have to give these rebuttals to you all because some people, I think they just be curious. It's just crazy. Vicky, thank you, sweetheart. Thank you so much. Juline, hey. I hear you, my sister. Romero, how are you? Latoya, hey. Hello, everybody. Y'all, I am exhausted. I am, I'm like really tired. My energy is low. I have not eaten anything today. Whatever. I got a lot of stuff to do um, before I go home. So y'all know how Saturdays be. You catching up, you running errands. Just, it's always something. Danny, I see you. Yep, stop with all the legalism, yes. So guys, before I get into this live, cause I don't wanna be up here real long. Uh, cause like I told y'all, I got some errands to run, but I want to pop in. Cause I didn't want it to get too late. And, and then I try to talk to you all. But, um, what I, what I was about to say is that for those of you who are new here, you should see a link on this live if you are interested in the membership. You do not have to feel pressure to go up the highest level. There are three levels. You can get the very first one if you are interested. And so for those who are not clear, I've explained it a couple of times before, but I think every time I go live, I'm going to explain it. I did the memberships to keep down on the riffraff because a lot of people come down the pipeline, they talk crazy, they get nasty, they get disrespectful, they try to be disrespectful with me, but I don't like when they try to get disrespectful with you guys. So just to keep more of a control uh, over my platform, I started the memberships where everybody can freely have open, grown men and women discussions. We don't have to worry about trolls and other people interrupting or being judgmental. It's a safe space. Um, and um, I, like I said, I've been up here for over 10 years. It was a long time coming. I actually should have done this if they had it six or seven years ago. But this is something that they recently just introduced, but it took me several months to make a decision to do it. And so I look forward to seeing more of you guys because people say that they love you. People say that they rock with you. They like what you bring. And so that's just another way of saying, okay, you know, I do like what you bring and um, I want to be more closely acquainted. Everybody has their different reasons for why they do different things, but that's the purpose of that. Um, Romero, thank you so much. Julene, yes, I needed to be safe. I'm sensitive about you guys. Really, I am. And I'm very um, serious and firm about my platform because God gave me this platform. I know what I'm here for. And so when it gets into people being messy and, and, and being divisive and argumentative, it was just a guy I just had to delete his comment. He's always commenting. He's always coming with these big paragraphs of a bunch of scriptures when I just post a, a simple word. I'm talking about the grace of God being sufficient. He starts going into doctrine. Why, why are you doing this? If I'm talking about God's grace and I'm talking about God's mercy, sir, just take it for what it is. Just, you know what? Wallow in the grace and mercy of God because it's a gift that he gives freely and generously. And neither one of us really deserve it. But why are you going into doctrine and theology? Just stop being overly spiritual and deep. I mean, people of God, it gets annoying as hell. It is so annoying. If you laugh, I've never understood Christian people, if you crack a joke and laugh, how people get upset about that. And they feel like, oh, this person is not saved. She's cracking a joke. She's laughing. They will discount every single thing that you've been doing all your life in the body of Christ because you cracked the joke. It's like church in church people, they just get so annoying. Oh my God. And that's just something I think that I need to just continue to pray about because my temper is just short with that. 
Stop being deep. Because if I put an air tag on you or somebody investigated you and followed you, a lot of y'all tongue talkers and dancers in the church, what would we see about you in your day-to-day -day life? When you wake up and you hit the floor, if we looked in your text message thread, if we had a video camera in your bathroom or in your room or, or, or something of a device, a satellite, following you in your vehicle, where would you be going? How are you treating people? How are you talking? What little secrets and dirt and skeletons will fall out your closet? But you tripping about somebody making a joke? Like, it, knock it off. Knock it off. Because, see, I'm not the one. Really, really, literally, I'm really not the one. I'm not 100% delivered and biting the head off. Not not 100%. Still a little bit. Still a little bit. Of, I need a little bit more prayer with that. I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to leave that alone. Danae, hey, sweetheart. Welcome to the Faith Show. Hello. So anyway, guys, let me let me get to this. Marsha G, do you feel me, sis? I know y'all feel me. See, I'm very, I try to be transparent as possible. I don't come up here to sell you all a dream. You know what I'm saying? I'm not up here saying holy, holy, hallelujah, and praise the Lord. That's not me. I'm not in the spirit every day. I am not in the spirit. Nobody is walking around in the spirit every single day. You got a prophetic word and you prophesying every, every single day? There is no way. There is no way. There's no way. God is not talking to you all day, every day. Where you release it, you come in with deep messages and revelations. 10, 15, 20 times a day. Uh, okay. I'm not putting no limit on God, but I've never heard of anything like that in my life. Where you just walking in the spirit 24 hours a day. Just all day, you just in the spirit. You ain't laughing. Everything is deep. Everything is serious. Everything is spiritualized. Everything is demonized. Oh, wow. It's just unbelievable. Prince, hey, sweetheart. But guys, let me tell you something. Let me let me get to the topic. I don't want to get too far off with that. That was just our little icebreaker. But guys, I want you all to take note to the video message I put up here the day before yesterday about flattery. And I came out of the book of Proverbs. And you all know the book of Proverbs is, a uh, to me, well, it's a book of wisdom, but the book of Proverbs, it cuts you. It cuts you. It is a book of correction. The book of Proverbs is a book of wisdom. The book of Proverbs, it cuts you. And it makes you do a lot of self-reflection. And it makes you do a lot of self-revelation. And that is one of the books of the Bible that I actually love. I love Ecclesiastes. I love Psalms. I like revelations. I like proverbs. Um, uh, those are just some books that I like. I like Matthew too. I like the books where Jesus uh, was uh, revealed and he starts doing a lot of talking and he speaks in parables. Um, Jesus was that type of person. That was his character. He did not always give a lot of details into something that he said. He did not elaborate. He would just speak in parables, and those that understood it, they understood it. Those that did not, they did not. There are even certain parts of the Bible. I don't want to say it's a postscript, but there are certain parts of the Word of God where, in parentheses, you will see those that understand, I'm paraphrasing, or those uh, that hear it would understand, things of that nature. So, you know, Jesus Christ... He spoke in parables, certain things were like codes, and certain things were not literal that Jesus said. They were more symbolic, okay? And so you have to understand and know that in order to really get the lesson in what Jesus was trying to teach his disciples and people that he would have interactions with on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, Hey, Sonny. So anyway, guys, flattery is something that a lot of us experience. And it is something that is inevitable. It's unavoidable. You are going to come across people who flatter you. And the unfortunate thing about flattery is that it is very deceiving because when someone is genuine with you and they really do love you, 
Shay Love, thank you so much, beautiful queen. Thank you, Shay. And Shay, I see you, sweetie. I, I, I definitely see you. God definitely has a lot in store for you in this season. Uh, I just see him doing a, a lot of different things in your life. I wanted to say that to you. But thank you, my sister. Uh, Jalea, I see you, sweetheart. Um, T. Washington, I see you. Um, but unfortunately, guys, when you are complimented and when you are flattered, it can become deceiving because people have a motive for you when they first lay eyes on you. They have either a negative motive or agenda, or they have a positive motive or agenda. And sometimes people are not really clear on what they want to do with you, but they just want a connection and interaction with you. And they want to be associated with you for different reasons. So when I tell you all that, I don't want you all to live your life in paranoia. I don't want you all to be scared. I don't want you to feel like everyone that comes to you is not genuine and honest with what they tell you. I am more so saying these things to you all because I just want you to be more sharp with your discernment and I want you to learn to take compliments and being flattered um, like a grain of salt and I want you to stay in the coat of humility no matter what is said about you because the main people who flatter you the main people that excessively praise you, the main people that are always complimenting you will be the first ones in line when you fall and make a mistake or they see something imperfect or ugly or nasty or ungodly about you. The same people who have blown you up and made you a pinnacle or put you on a, a pedestal or put your anointing and your gifts on a pedestal. These are some of the same people who will be the first in line to expose you if they find out any dirt about you, if they hear anything about you that goes against the word of God or God himself, or you don't give them what they want or you don't do what they want you to do. The very people that lift you up, they will tear you down when they are given the opportunity or when you don't give them what they want. And so this is why, especially in this season, because in this season, God is doing a lot. God is doing judgment. God is bringing blessings. God is bringing healing, restoration of numerous things, families, relationships, health, uh, 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 all of that. And so in this season, when, when you get into a new season, it is very critical you watch the people you allow to attach themselves to you. And it's very critical that you watch who you allow to be in your circle because flattery can also be a very big distraction. And so if you have someone that's in your circle or you have someone that is always excessively complimenting you, it starts to take away the purpose of what the relationship really is. And so if you are at a certain place uh, spiritually or emotionally, you will sometimes get so accustomed to the excessive praise, to the compliments, and to the flattery to where when it stops you will get angry or you may get upset or you may question why you are not being praised by a particular person like they used to and then that's opening another door see it's all about where each individual person is because it does not matter how anointed you are it does not matter how gifted you are it doesn't matter how close you are to god you are still a human being who has corruption in your flesh and you are still an imperfect man or woman and so 
we can be in the holy of holies with God because I believe all of us who have been walking with God for a significant amount of time we have had moments where we have gone deep into the spirit of the Lord and we have seen some things some people have seen activity in heaven in visions or in dreams some people have seen the the curtains in heaven maybe you got past curtain one or two or three I don't know but it doesn't matter how deep we've gone into God it does not matter how anointed we are you could probably preach the house down prophesy 100 percent accurately to where your prophetic words everything you tell someone it comes to pass you made no mistakes and you can probably sing your tail off write music you could probably do all that play the piano oh my god like nobody's business but guess what when you're done being used and when you're done prophesying and singing and preaching and dancing and speaking in your heavenly language in multiple languages or interpreting a tongues whatever your gift is you're still just a plain old man or woman with corruption in your flesh i just have to remind you guys of this if any one of you are in the dark about it we are men and women that are still trying to figure the life experience out. We're not done living. Life gets hard. Life gets overwhelming. Sometimes we get tired of it. I'm going to just be real. I told you I, I, I don't come here with nothing extra. I'm just coming being just very real and blunt. And so with flattery, when people start to compliment you, the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 29, verse 5, that they are spreading a net for you. And when you really think about it, it is kind of like a net is being spread for you in the sense of someone is kind of low-key setting you up. What they're setting you up for, you can't really necessarily pinpoint what it is, but just understand that if it's somebody on your team that never has anything bad to say about you and every time you talk to them they're telling you all these beautiful wonderful things you got to start to raise your eyebrow and uh kind of question like what is that about you have to reflect and sit back for a second and say okay something about this is not authentic you ever had somebody like that that is connected to you or they come into your life they approach you at church they approach you at work they approach you, you know, they are friend, and they are always pumping you up to the highest level possible. You are so anointed. You are so beautiful. You are so intelligent. Oh my God, you are so successful. You are so generous. You are so nice. Oh my God, I've never met anybody like you. You are so different. You stand out in the crowd. I just love you so much. I just respect you so much. I am just so happy that God sent you in my life. I am so happy that we have been able to come together and connect my sister. I am so happy that I have you in my life, my brother. You know how flatterers, how they talk. It becomes inauthentic. And it becomes abnormal. You can just tell when somebody is being fake. You could just tell when it's not sincere. If you have any level of discernment or, you know, intuition, you will know when somebody is being extra and over the top when it comes to you. Because even if they don't know anything about you personally or they don't know about what's going on in your personal life, you know you. You know you. You know how you can be. You know how you are when things don't go right in your life. You know how you are when there's pressure on you. You know how you are when you have a bad day. And so being flattered, you can cover up the real you and how ugly you really can get or how ugly you really can be to those people who are flattering you but deep inside secretly 
you know how you really can get when pushed. And so what I'm saying to you all is that you must be careful with taking the excessive compliments and people flattering you and you not keeping a healthy balance and boundary behind the people or the person that is always flattering you. Please don't take it to heart. Just don't. Don't take it to heart and don't become puffed up and arrogant and uppity and smug because there are groups of people who admire you or they're inspired by you or they look up to you or even if they model themselves after you. You better stay in the cult of humility, people of God. Stay in the cult of humility because you all have to remember that there was a time in your life that before God really, really, and God, for some of you, he has not really, really put his hand into your life at the rate and at the level he really can. Not because you don't deserve it, not because he forgot about you, not because he does not love you, but because it's just not your season for him to touch certain things. But there was a point before the point you're at right now today that you used to be at and it was not good. It wasn't good. Whether it was financially, whether you didn't have a job or if you had one, it wasn't the best. Whether you drove a certain type of car, you lived a certain way, you looked a certain way, you had not developed a very strong relationship with him. There were various places and levels and dimensions that all of you used to be at at one point. And when God started to deal with you and deliver you and free you, and you started to build up your confidence and you started to become more secure, and you started to grow. The Bible talks about going from glory to glory. And the Bible also says, I would rather you prosper as your soul prospers. So as your soul, which is the inner man prospers, you will begin to prosper in other aspects. Because see, if in your soul, you are a nasty arrogant person you cannot really believe that god is about to put you at millionaire status the world is going to do what the world is going to do it's a lot of arrogant buttholes that are filthy rich but see satan takes care of his children as well but you all don't belong to satan so i'm addressing you and so what i'm saying is that you were at a certain level before but don't ever think for one second because you have grown from glory to glory. And because spiritually where you are in 2023, you are at a higher level than where you were in 2022, 2021, 2020. And before all of those years that you won't get tore down to an even lower level if you don't watch yourself. This is why it's very important that the more you get blessed and the more you grow and the more you become confident and secure and the power that God has placed on you and the anointing that he has given you, you have to become even more humble. And this is difficult for some people in the body of Christ because they forget about where they used to be. They forget about the fact that they would not even be doing half of what they're doing if it was not for the hand of God and the abundant grace and mercy of God. People get very high and mighty when they get a financial breakthrough, when they get a husband, when they get a wife, when they're being used in the kingdom to prophesy, to preach, to sing. They get on a TV show. They, they record a live album. They get elevated to a pastor, to a minister, to an apostle, whatever. 
they forget that at one point people didn't even care about you people didn't even know who you were you were a joke to some people and so how dare i how dare any one of you and anybody else how dare you get high and mighty when it's only because of the grace and mercy and the hand of God that has raised you up. That should make you be even more humble because you really know who you are with, without it. Without the glory of God being on your life, you know who you are. You know how ugly and dirty and nasty you could be. Because you're a human being, again, with corruption in your flesh. So I have to just put these reminders out to let you know that flattery will get you in a lot of trouble if you are not walking in humility and if you cannot discern the spirit behind the person who is flattering you. Flattery can become a scandal in your life. Flattery can tear you down in life. Flattery can give you a false sense of self. And so I'm not saying that when somebody gives you a compliment, you don't take it. Because all of us at some point, we do need a boost. We need a boost. We need a boost. It's good to hear somebody tell you, you know, I love that God hand is on your life. You know, you're you're really anointed. You know, you're, you're, you're intelligent. I like what I see. I like what God is doing. That's awesome. Because sometimes all of us, we will question if we are doing the right thing. We will question if we are in the right place in our life because we're human beings. We, we, we don't want to make a mistake, okay? We don't want to make a mistake. We are. It's unavoidable. But bigger mistakes that can, like, destroy us. I think everybody in the body of Christ, we always are constantly going to God just to make sure we're good with God and we're at the place that we're supposed to be. And so what I'm saying is that with flattery, you just have to be careful with that because people will flatter you, but it's a setup. It is a setup. And what does flattery do? When the same person is coming to you, excessively complimenting you, um, you start to get comfortable. You start to be more vulnerable. You start to be more open. And then it crosses a line because that person or those people, they will start to take an inch and then a mile and then a whole road trip and a flight into more of your life. And they will feel like they have a license to start saying and doing more and you did not invite them to. And so what I'm telling you all is that you have to take it with a grain of salt and you have to always be humble and you have to always recognize you know what, this particular person is always excessively complimenting me and flattering me. What is it that he or she wants from me and why are they doing this? Now, I can give you one reason because I talked about it in a video message. Um, there are some people, and you all know that one of the staples that I talk about as far as the kingdom is concerned is the spirit of jealousy. You will see that. That is a very, very large topic, and it's a very, very common and prevalent spirit in the kingdom. You see that. Men and women of God, Christian people can be very competitive, very insecure, very jealous spirited people because they don't know who they are they are not happy where they are and so they feel like you being at a certain place spiritually or you being gifted that is taking away something from them they don't understand that when they see you and you're a prophet or prophetess or you're singing or you're writing or you're preaching see people don't understand they see the finished product but behind the scenes, when you get off that stage and when you cut that microphone off, you might not even have no stage. You just out here in the world and God got you doing it a little bit differently. I'm going to talk about that as far as coverings because this is another argument that men and women of God are doing in the kingdom. That's something else. I'll get on that later. But they don't see what's going on behind the scenes. They don't see the attacks. They don't see the attacks that's coming on you. Because Satan got you on a hit list. Because you preached or you prophesied and three or four hundred people got saved and came to God. So now hell is mad and they're after you. 
and they are manifesting the enemy's ministers and spirits they are manifesting in family members they are manifesting in friends they don't see the financial to attacks they don't see the attacks on your health they don't see the attacks on your mind they don't see the attacks in your marriage they don't see the attacks with your children they don't see the attacks at your job they don't see the attacks where you you can't keep jobs it ain't because of you doing something wrong but it's a manifestation of demonic spirits you're dealing with racism you're dealing with uh sexual harassment you're dealing with favoritism see people don't see behind the curtain of the very thing that they are jealous of concerning you they don't see it they don't see it this is why i i can't do it because when i see somebody that drive a car bigger and better than mine or they live better than me or they got that particular man on their arm i literally don't care about it because guess what sis i don't know what you had to live through i don't know what you have to go through now being married to that man or driving a car that you drive or living how you live see people don't see this stuff it's people that live in many mansions and they drive luxury cars but see y'all not seeing that several times people have tried to carjack them y'all not seeing that they house them been broken into six and seven times y'all are not seeing that it's always somebody in their face asking them for a bunch of money because they know they got it Y'all not seeing those attacks come to that prophetess that you jealous of. You couldn't live through it. You couldn't walk through it. You couldn't walk through it. But you envy it and you want it. But you're not willing to pay the price for that oil. You're not willing to pay the price for that oil that God have put on that person that you jealous of and you envy it. You're not willing. You're not willing to walk through the fire like that person that you... Or you just wake up one day and be like, hmm, I'm about to tell a lie on her. I'm going to say she did this. Oh, because you jealous. But you don't know the half of what that brother or sister got to go through. And you sit back and you hate on them. Like this, this is just surreal. I just, like I told you, I have to just break this stuff down in layers because that's just what it is. They, they don't know the sacrifice. They don't know the tears. Oh, they don't know the tears that many of us have cried years and years of just tears and frustration and you saying you know what god i can't do this with you anymore oh when you know that you've been walking with god for a long time if y'all are transparent everybody y'all not gonna get what i'm about to say but some of you all in the chat you gonna you gonna be like kiki i know what you're talking about when you get to this point where you literally go to god and be like god whatever you got going on between me and you i can't do this no more it's too much. It's just too much serving you. It's too much walking with you. I don't know what type of game this is or like what you trying to do with me. Like, I don't know, but I mean, whatever you gonna do, can you like speed it up? Cause I like, I can't do it. It's just too much. I literally can't do this anymore. It was, it's just easier for me to just be in the world and just have fun and kick it, have two or three men, drink, chill. I ain't have to go through none of this stuff when I start doing the right thing. Because everything I'm doing right, I keep getting pushed back like four or five points. Like, I, I don't understand. Like, yeah, God, I'm done. You know, like, I don't really know what this is. Like, but like, I can't do it. Everybody in the kingdom that's with God for real, you didn't have this conversation. You've had this conversation. Trust me, you have. And Christian people, they're not going to talk about that. Oh, they're not going to talk about that. They're not going to talk about times where, no, you refuse to go to God in prayer. No, God, I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to pray. No, God, I'm not denouncing you. I'm not saying I don't love you, but right now I don't want to talk to you. I just don't. I'm not feeling it. Oh, that's another conversation, my brothers and sisters. But continue to stay tuned. We're going to talk. We're going to talk. And so with flattery, what I'm telling you all is that you just got to be discerning. You have to be discerning because people are inauthentic. People have plans. People have motives when it comes to you. And those plans and those motives, they have them because they want them to be 
convenient and beneficial to them and what their agenda is. People will want to be around you for clout. They are a clout chaser. They want the recognition of being associated with you. They want the association. They want to be able to say, I'm friends with Kiki. I know her. I talk to her. I'm friends with so-and-so. I'm friends with EC. I'm friends with Julene. I'm friends with Danny. I'm friends with Marsha. I'm friends with Sunshine Chronicles. I'm friends with her or him. I know him. I spend time with her. I see some stuff she goes through. Some people just simply want to attach themselves to you simply because of who you are. It has nothing to do with them. They want to drain you or your shine. They want to take the shine off you. And they know you shining. And they know you shining bright. And they want to be in the spotlight with you. You make them look good. This is not about you being superior. This is not about you being arrogant. It's just a real fact. People know when they see God's hand on you and that you are favored by the Lord. People know when you are popular. You don't have to be on TV. You don't have to be a celebrity status. You literally may not even have a lot. You can be standing on the corner waiting for the bus. People know. They know who you are, trust me. They know who you are. They know what you're capable of. They know what you got going on. And so they will flatter you to make you comfortable. They will flatter you because they see a vulnerability. They will flatter you because it leaves a door or a bridge of communication open with you and that person. And they want to learn more. They want to find out more. Let me tell you guys something because I feel like in my spirit, a lot of you all want to an answer to this. And um, I don't know why this just came up, but you all are about to get a revelation about something. There was a time in the kingdom where when I was uh, really spiritually immature in my gifts and um, when I was a leader, for many, many years in um, the church. I did not understand how when it came to the man and woman of God, and it wasn't even just about me, I was talking about in general. It was not specifically just me and my situation. I was just in general, all across the board. I, didn't, I don't care what church you go to or what it was, but I had an issue at one point in my life with the fact when you wanted to talk to the man or woman of God, okay, you were told sometimes, make an appointment. You can't just walk over there to the first lady. You cannot just walk over there to the pastor. You cannot just walk over there to the bishop. You cannot just walk over there to apostle. You cannot just walk to so-and-so. Call the church, make an appointment, or if you saw them when church ended and you were walking towards them, they armor bearers would they would stop you. And you would have to stand in a line or you would have to sit down and then they would have to go and ask the man of God. They tell them, so-and-so want to talk to you. He or she got to ask you a question. Me and other people would be livid about this. And then accusations came. Like I said, this is when you young in your spirit. And we'd be like, who are who are they? They not God. Oh, they arrogant. They uppity. They know who I am. I've been a member of this church for 10 years. I've been a member of this church for eight years. They know me. They got my personal private number. How dare they, Armour Bear, come tell me. I got to stand in a line. I got to call the church. I got to make an appointment. But you know what? That's why they say things come full circle. And they say that when we make assumptions and when we put out certain energy and certain things, it comes back to you. Because boy, oh boy, little did I know the ignorance of my spiritual immaturity at that time. And um, little did I know that one day, one day, I was going to be in a position where some people were coming to me and wanted to talk to me and say certain things to me 
And I'm like, wow, this is literally a full circle moment. And now I see why it has to be order. Now I see why just anybody cannot come down the pipeline and do and say what they want to do when they want to do and say it. Because people's intentions are not always pure. Now, I'm not saying at the point when I wanted to talk to the man or woman of God that I had a negative intention. It literally was just, okay, I just want to talk to my pastor. I want to give him a hug. Literally, that's just the truth. But I understand now more than ever why that is not always going to be the case. But a lot of you all in your spiritual immaturity, you take it personal. You will slander and attack the man or woman of God because you are not allowed to freely walk up on them. But you never understand it until you get into that place. No, I'm not saying in a place of now you're a first lady. I'm not saying when you're in a you're in a place of being a minister or a pastor or a bishop. I'm not saying that. But I'm just saying when God has grown you spiritually and when you are not where you used to be and your gift is more recognized and it's being talked about or you have a platform and then the very thing you used to try to do and where you misjudge a man or woman of God, now that same judgment that you put out in the airwaves is being put on you because you're in a higher place and a higher position whether you in the church or not and so the revelation that i can tell you all who may take it personal if you cannot directly walk up to your local pastor or first lady or a particular minister you got to understand that that is not always what they necessarily want to do that's not how they want to be but that's the way it has to be to not only protect them, but to bring order. And because of the fact they don't know what your motive is. Yes, you may have complimented them and told them, oh, I love you, pastor. I love you, first lady. I've seen people just bring gifts to church. You see it. But at the same time, you know, if you got the sermon, yeah, that person on something. That person on some, that person got a motive. They got a motive. And so what I'm telling you all is that you have to guard yourself. You have to guard your anointing. You have to be more private. You don't have time to acknowledge every single soul that wants to talk to you. You don't have the capacity. You don't have the time. You are only one man or one woman. You just don't have it. And so I am letting you all know this is why you must be careful with flattery because when people begin to compliment you, a lot of you all probably will say, well, this person is real because they like me they love me so much but you're not seeing what's going on in their heart you're not seeing what's going on in their heart you 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 don't know their thoughts towards you 100 percent. you're hearing what their mouth is saying and that's why in proverbs i told you all a couple of days ago i wanted you to read that and i wanted you to study and meditate on proverbs chapter 29 verse 5 because that's why it says that a flatterer they spread a net what does a net do it catches when you see a fisherman go to um fish they have a net and the whole purpose of them having a net is because they want to catch fish they're there for a purpose the purpose is hey they had a fishing rod they had a little worm the little meal worms or they had just a regular worm and they put it on the end of their fishing rod and they toss it in the water. And then once it moves and it shakes, they know that a fish have gotten caught on the net, on, on, the, well, on the end of the fishing rod. But then they'll have a net. And the net, a certain amount of fish will get caught in the net. And then they close it. They pull it, they close it, and they pull it on the land. And that's their dinner. 
Some people, they fish and they catch a particular fish or crabs or lobsters because the purpose is for them to sell it and get, you know, profit. They profit from it. And some, they do it personally for their household. It just depends on where you are. And so they do that. And um, thank you, Dory. Right, bait. And so they do that for a purpose. But the fish don't know that when somebody's in their little pickup truck and they in their car and they got the little mealworms and they bait in the back of that truck, they don't know the agenda and the purpose. They in the sea. They in the water swimming, chilling, minding their business. They don't know that a net is waiting for them and they about to die. They literally don't know that. They just swimming around, having a grand old time. But little do they know, yeah, baby, I'm in my truck and I got my bait sitting right in the back, got my fishing rod, and baby, me and my family are about to eat y'all. We are about to eat y'all. I got the cooking oil ready, got my onions chopped, got my old bay seasoning, got my smoked paprika, got my garlic powder and my onion powder. I got my fish knife or scale where you scrape the scales off. Oh baby, I got it all. Yeah, today the last day you gonna be breathing. Oh, they don't know. And so I'm using that. You better use it for yourself in everyday life. Another human being will try to spread a net for you. Oh, that woman of God, mm, she's a prophetess. Hmm, he's a prophet. Ah, she's preaching. He's preaching. Hmm, I see her up there on YouTube. Ah, I'm sitting back in a cut. I'm watching her. Mm-hmm. I'm going to tell her how beautiful she is. I'm going to tell her I want to work with her. I'm going to tell him I want to work with him. I like what she doing. But, you know, I'm going to tell that sister that. Cause I'm trying to see if I could get her in the bedroom. Even if it take me telling her she's my kingdom spouse. This is real. Did you all know that people, they sit back and they plot and plan against the righteous? You all better wake up, open up your eyes. Cause a lot of you all, I feel like a lot of you all, and it's heavy in my spirit. I feel like a lot of you all, you in the dark. You all keep thinking this is a joke and this is a game. And you keep giving a lot of people access to you. Who is that in this chat? Who is that? You just skinning and grinning at people's faces. You letting them come to your house. You going to their house. You can <laughs> Girl, sis. <laughs> Baby, they spreading a net for you. Who is that? Who is that? Who is that? Who is it? You up here. You're definitely up here. I don't know who. I can't see that. I'm not seeing that, but I'm feeling it. Some of y'all, you in the dark. You're too comfortable. And they have been spreading a net for you for a long time. They've been watching you for years. Okay? And they coming through the pipeline of your mama, your daddy, your cousins, at your job, in the church. That man you dating, that woman you date. Baby, they've been set. They had they net and they bait waiting for you for months for a couple of y'all for years and you just in la la land these people are not authentic with you they trying to set you up to take you down the whole setup is to get you in the bed the whole setup is to drain you of your energy and your anointing do i need to go through the story of solomon and how delilah tricked him and had spread a net for him and told when he told her how he got his strength. Oh, what happened to his beautiful long hair? What happened? And this is how some of you all are. Don't be fooled. Don't be fooled. These people that's coming around, they asking you too many questions. Sis, where you live at? How many kids you got? What's your real name? When is your birthday? Oh, you used to date da-da-da? Girl, we should travel together. Hey, bro, call me, bro, bro. Yeah, let's go. We barbecuing. You you want to tailgate? The game coming up. Y'all got to stop being in the dark about these people. You got to stop. Y'all got to stop. Stop being comfortable. I keep telling you all, pe people don't like you like you think they do. That ain't for everybody. 
But a lot of people, you they not no fan of you like that. In a lot of you all's cases, people are not a fan of you like that. But people are good at pretending. People will sometimes be cool with you and act like they love you and like you because they cannot handle the power and the anointing and gifts that's on you. And so it's easier to be a fake friend than an enemy. Sometimes people are so full of jealousy and hate and envy, they don't they don't really know what to do with it. They don't know what to do with it. Hold on, y'all, because it's like starting to rain a little bit. Let me close my sun. They don't know. I hope you guys can still see me because it's like drizzling now. Let me know if you guys can still see me in the chat, too. Um, But some, some people, they um, will approach you because they have a motive and an agenda for you and it's all a setup they they don't like you like that and the jealousy and hate and envy is in them but they would rather be a fake friend than an enemy if you've never encountered a very jealous person if they are in your presence they can't even be still that that i know this this cannot just be my experience you will be in a room with other women you will be at work you will be around certain cousins and family members and and the jealousy is so strong they can't even look you in your eye and and they will try to always make it like you're not a big deal you ain't nobody you a non-factor a lot of jealous people they always try to speak the opposite of really what they know or what they feel and what they know to be factual. They'll do the opposite. So what they do is they try to downgrade and minimize you because it's like it's like a psychological, you know, bamboozlement that they try to do. You ain't nobody. You is not nobody. You a non-factor. Huh? <laughs> it couldn't be me. That's you. I, I girl, I heard about you. It could never be me, cause see, I, y'all know how people talk. You know the mannerisms and the attitude that they have. But jealous people, sometimes they always try to downplay you. They always try to minimize you. They always discredit and dishonor you. And you got to sit to yourself and be like, but wait a minute. If I'm really literally not nothing, you, you putting a lot of power behind what you saying. The vein is popping out of your head and out the side of your neck. You loud as hell for me to really not be nothing. You can't even sit still. I mean, like literally somebody will be like, oh, you ain't nothing and be moving. You ever just been at work or somebody come around you and they. <sighs> and, and somebody be like, well, why are you looking at Kiki like that? I'm just using that. As an example, whatever your name is. Why are you looking at? I don't care about this person not important. They are not factor. But wait, man, you getting really loud. And you moving around and screaming. For me to really be a non-factor and not important. You real emotional. You real emotional. I had that happen at work with this particular girl. She see me. She couldn't even be still. It literally was a demonic manifestation. Every day I came into work at this old job I had. Every day. She'd be perfectly fine. And when I walk in the room and be clocking in. <sighs> she see me talking to somebody. Wasn't even talking about her. It'd be a general conversation. She bust through me and the person I was talking to. Oh, don't nobody want to hear all that? Like, what? I ain't even paying attention to you. She could not be still. Another time I'm outside of the job, work over. Uh, one of the managers, we standing around, we talking. And um, this old, a older white guy. And so we were just talking about the time sheet. And um, he was telling me how he wanted help, how he was getting stressed out. And they had sent me in his area one day to uh, help him. 
because what he does, and he's a former architect, actually, I, believe it or not. And he got some type of injury or something, and he couldn't really be in that field. But he is highly intelligent. And so the position he has, is it's like mathematical. He has to do a lot of calculations and numbers. So it was like some of us that they were sending his area to like really help him out. And me and him was just talking outside of work one day, and this girl comes out. And she's just, she didn't even hear what we was talking about. She, ah, da, 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 mumbling stuff under her breath. And people was just like, hey, what is wrong with her? Every time she see you, Kiki, every time you come around, she gets real animated. I had never did nothing to this girl in my life. This was a team lead. Since I never did nothing to this woman in my life. But she couldn't even sit still. I've seen it with other people. And so with flattery, some people, instead of acting like that, where it's obvious that it's an issue there, they'll overly excessively compliment you. Girl, you are so pretty. You are so beautiful. I love your hair. I love what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. You know what? I'm going to be having a housewarming soon, sis. I want you to come through. I love to hang out with you. What you like doing on the weekend? They would just rather have some type of interaction or connection with you because being jealous of you and going against you, they know it's not going to be successful. They know it's not going to work. So they just rather be a fake friend. But that's still giving that person access to you. Period. So, you know, it's just, hey, Anthony. Um, hey, C24. So it just becomes an issue when you take flattery to heart. And like I said, I cannot tell you all for yourselves how to decipher what is authentic praise and genuine praise against flattery. And um, somebody being fake, that's something you have to do. And your everyday life and your connections to people and you talking to different people, you have to really have the discernment and you have to be able to know when someone is being real with you. You have to know these things because if you don't, you will take to heart what they're saying to you and then it will change you you will turn into a different person you know what i'm saying you will turn into a different person so my thing with that is sometimes people they have wait guys hold on Okay, so anyway, um, sometimes people will overly compliment you and they will say things to you because of the fact it's easier for them to fake get along with you than be an enemy. Because they know, they can sense that, okay, if I go up against he or she, it's not going to go well with me. I'm not going to be successful at doing that, but I can act like I love them. I can act like I admire them and um, I can get a little bit further. And this is why flattery is deceiving. It is deceiving. It tricks you if you are not aware. And so you all, especially in the kingdom, you have to know the difference. You have to know the difference. I'm not saying if you, from this point forward, get a compliment or someone praises you that is fake. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that every single person you experience and come across, they are not real. And they really don't feel these wonderful, beautiful things about you. I'm not saying that. But there are points and there are times where people will approach you um, and they will 
start saying things excessively and it's out of place and it's inauthentic and it's unwarranted and it's especially alarming when the person doesn't really know you like that see it's one thing for somebody to see you from afar off and they see what you're doing even if you're on a platform they compliment it they like it okay that's fine but when they start trying to go deeper and just overly excessively praising you that is alarm that an alarm should go off within your spirit like but wait a minute he or she does not even know me like that they don't know anything about me this person has never hung out with me i've never to told this person anything personal about my life how is it that they're lifting me up to this high level and they really don't know me like that you have to pay attention dory thank you it's a red flag you all have to pay attention and so that is what i wanted to tell you all live today you all already saw the video message but i give you all the opportunity in real time to ask questions about certain topics that I post and I already put out there. And so flattery is something that is um, very common. And it comes from people sometimes that you don't even really have a connection with. You don't have, and if you do have interaction with them, it's not a close interaction. It's not a consistent interaction. It could just be somebody that sees you come in to work five days out the week or three or four days out the week. It could be that neighbor that you see outside every now and then and they approach you. It could be someone that wants to sit next to you in church. It could be that family member because see, when we hear about family, people automatically assume that when they know that your family is your family, that that means all of you all are close. That's not everybody's story. I'm very, very distant from a lot of my family members on my mother and father's side. And I'm not saying this is something intentional that I'm doing. But the point that I'm making is that we're not close. They don't see me. I don't see them. They don't call me or text me. I don't call or text them. We are not following each other on social media. So if one of them was to come to me and start overly or excessively praising me, I would be like, yeah, this is a red flag. This, this is not even real. This, this is not real. This is fake. Somebody that's overly praising you and saying this stuff to you like they know you like that, that is a dead giveaway. Just for those of you who may not be sure how to pinpoint it. When somebody is coming at you like that, you got to be like, okay, I, I might not be that great with discernment, Okay, I, I don't, I, I, you know, I don't know. I ain't good. Julene, thank you, sweetie. Welcome. I may not be that great with discernment, but I know this woman right here, this sister doesn't know me like that. She's really, really lifting me up and praising me, and she really does not know me like that. Or this, this brother is really praising me and saying some stuff to me, and he really doesn't know me like that. He doesn't know me like that. I've never hung out with him. I've never told him anything personal about my life. So that I'm telling you all that just to help you to be able to recognize flattery. When someone comes to you, they will even give you fake words. Oh, my sister, I just see the fire of God coming on your life. And I just really see God lifting you up to a very high level. And you're going to do damage in the kingdom. And I'm going to be right there with you waiting. And, da -da -da -da. and you will be like, wait, hold on. How do you know you don't know me? You, you're not around me. It's one thing for you to have discernment. Or your gift where you know somebody can give you a word of wisdom or they can give you a word of knowledge. Because see, you all have to be able to decipher between that as well. Sometimes someone can simply just give you a word of wisdom or a word of knowledge, but it's not prophetic. A word of wisdom and a word of knowledge has nothing to do with a prophetic revelation. It's, it's simply what it is, a word of knowledge. 
a word of wisdom. And a lot of people in the kingdom, they mix it. They intertwine it. They Somebody could have just told you a word of wisdom, but somebody would be like, oh, that was just a prophetic unction. And they told me, no, they did not just prophesy to you. They just gave you a word of knowledge. They just gave you a word of wisdom. That's all that was. It wasn't prophetic. And so I'm just being honest with you all, letting you know that. So um, you all have to know that you can never make people's praises and compliments bigger than who God is and who God is in you. Because some people, they live off of that. Introducing social media we see people log in every day on youtube on facebook on instagram on tiktok some are even on periscope and we see them being flattered those women who are half naked the women who are real overly done up the men, that's the little bodybuilders. They showing their muscles. They in the gym. The gym clips that we see. Not because a lot of them want you to be healthy. And they want to talk to you really about weight loss and your health. But they're sexualizing their journey in the gym. And y'all know I'm not lying. They cannot simply just put up the clip and just talk and tell you their regimen of what they're eating and what they're doing they're sexualizing it so they have on their workout clothes some of the males but they have someone videotaping them where their penis is moving and jumping and they got on a certain kind of shorts so you can see it because they have made flattery bigger than god and the gift that God has given them, even their very platform. This is real talk, and you must be aware of this. See, when you allow the compliments of people to start getting in your spirit and getting in your head, you start to lose focus and sight on why you there in the first place. And then you start teetering off, going in another lane, doing some other stuff. Then it becomes carnal, then it becomes seductive, it, it turns into a bunch of other stuff. Same thing. Hey, Ma. Same thing with a bunch of other people. The women, they coming up there. Okay, you are Instagram model, sis. You just supposed to model the dresses. Just model the dress, sis. Put the dress on. Well, you talking about your hair. Just talk about your hair. Talk about the outfit. But what does a lot of them do? They have to sexualize it. They got to have somebody with a video camera walking in the back of them showing they booty jiggling. And then people are in the comment section flattering them. She ate. She ate that. Come through, sis. Come through. Push through, sis. Come on. Christian women do this. And you can't help but see it because it's everywhere. I don't care how many times you clean your feet, some type of way it's going to be pushed back out and you it's unavoidable. It's unavoidable. They will sexualize it. They've completely forget. Okay, I started this platform to show women the dresses at this boutique. I want to show them cute dresses that they can purchase to rock when they um out on a um on a date with their husband you know, with their boyfriend. I forget that I'm on this platform to talk about health. I want the overweight people or the people that wants to change their eating or their physical appearance. I am here to show them bit by bit, blow by blow, how I do it. A lot of that stuff has become sexualized. And, and it starts to happen from flattery. People will say this stuff to you and slowly it's spreading a net. It's spreading a net. And you lose sight. You lose focus. You had one job. You had one 
job, sis. You had one job, brother. Now you doing several other things because you letting the compliments. And this is why a lot of them get cocky. And when some of y'all go up there and comment and say some stuff to them, they ignore you. You're not even acknowledged. Influencers do it. They get so high and mighty to where they too good to respond to, to you. Now I'm going to be real. You can't respond to everybody. You can't, you, but some of them, they don't say nothing, not one word, not one single word. They forget why they there. Oh, I'm too big. I got too many people subscribed to. I got too many people follow me. I ain't got time to talk. I said what I needed to say. I'm out. Oh, okay. Okay. People will blow you up. Yeah, man, I remember when you was doing this. I remember you only had 200 people following you. I remember when you was cooking them dinners out your kitchen. Man, I remember when you was driving uh, uh, your little beetle. But, man, you really didn't came up. Man, your body on point. Oh, my God, body goals. Oh, my God, couple goals. Blowing them up. They started some of these married couples in Hollywood. Y'all already, we see it playing out in front of our eyes. I don't have to call no names. Y'all be jealous of these people. You be envying these people. You feel like you a defect standing next to some of these celebrity couples. You sitting up here talking about some of these rappers and rapper couples. Ooh, marriage goals. Oh, I want, I, man, that's what I want. I love how he look at her. I love how he love her. And then, boom, breaking news, divorce. You don't know what these people going through. But you flattering them, and you're pumping them up, and y'all think they don't see this stuff? And what do they do? Initially, they was talking about their gift that God blessed them with. They talking about their craft, their gift, their talent, and their skill. That I told y'all you supposed to showcase when you go to work. Not sleeping with your co-workers. Not gossiping. Not slandering nobody you work with and competing with them. Not flattering these people. But they started off, okay, I'm just going to talk about my movie that's coming out. I'm going to talk about this sitcom that, that's coming out. But then y'all compliment them and flatter them too much about their husband, about their wife. And every day they post personal things about their husband and their wife. All these paragraphs, all these pictures letting you inside their house. They got their kids all up on video, all on Facebook, all on YouTube, all on Instagram, all on TikTok. They, they, they doing couple tags. Whole married couples are all races, all ages, all backgrounds. They telling you every move they making. When initially it was okay, their platform was about jokes. They content was about jokes and having fun. But everybody then pumped them up. Couple goals. Ain't no couple my goal. Because I don't know what you got to go through behind the scenes, sis, with your husband. Me and you don't know what that brother going through with that woman you lusting over. Y'all just don't know. And you leaving your marriage open for an attack when you keep showcasing it. You showing your cars, you opening up, you, you taking cameras in your house. You getting too personal. You oversharing, you getting too personal. You don't owe these people out here nothing. You don't owe them nothing. People will start to, like I said, they start to dig. You should record here. You be sitting in the car. Yeah, and what about it? I don't owe you nothing. Who are you? Who the hell are you? I don't owe you. I don't have to tell you nothing about my living arrangements. Stop letting these people regulate your platform. Why you recording there? Why you recording here? Why you got that on? Why your camera ain't faced this way? Put up some pictures. We want to see this. Baby, I ain't got to give you nothing. I'm a grown woman. And I'm telling y'all that. Stop letting these people regulate your platform and regulate and control what you out here doing. They get comfortable. They trying to train you and mold you into who they want you to be. You don't owe these people. It's not their business. How would that look? I'm coming at one of y'all. Go inside your house. Well, who you live with? 
who live with you. Why do that even matter? We're not here for that. We're not here for that. You don't owe me nothing. Not one thing. People be wanting to know, are you married? You got a boyfriend? Are you serious? That's crazy. And so I'm telling y'all, y'all trolls, y'all just keep coming up here saying stupid stuff. I ain't even going to repeat what y'all saying. But y'all just, I just don't understand it. Get a life. Please get a life. Anyway, like I said, be careful with flattery. Know when somebody is authentic. Somebody can tell you something nice and move on. Just know the difference. Know the difference. Know when it's coming from a sincere place. That's what I'm telling you all. Know when it's coming from a pure place. Because everything is not pure. So yeah, guys, I'm pretty much done with that. I'm, I'm done with the lesson. And I hope that you all, like I said, read Proverbs chapter 29. Read really that whole chapter. But you can zoom in and um, pay special attention to chapter 29, um, well, verse 5. Pay special attention to that. Because... It's just something that I think more men and women of God need to understand and be aware of. Because I have seen people, like I said, it's like a setup because people will compliment you so much and they will speak so well of you and so highly of you to the point where um, it becomes destructive. And you see people who, have you ever like sat back and saw somebody that is being overly praised and overly lifted up and complimented? And you start to see, maybe not instantly, but you start to see over time, they turn into a monster. They turn into a monster and they get so big headed and so high and lifted up to where when you come with a real truth about them, they will accuse you of hating. They will accuse you of not being happy for them. They have gotten so accustomed to only hearing good, great things about themselves. They're hearing something that is true is looked at as aggression coming from you. Or you're jealous or hating on them. Or you're delusional. No, sis, I told you, you got a nasty attitude. Jealousy ain't nowhere in that. Your attitude sucks. That's it. That's all. It's nothing more. It's nothing less. You have a nasty disposition. You have a nasty attitude. My brother, you are disrespectful. I don't care about how fine you are. I don't care how on point your body is. You are disrespectful. There's no hating in this. There's no jealousy in this. There's no competition in this. It is what it is. You are, my brother, disrespectful. But they will get so accustomed to only hearing good things. The first negative thing they hear, they like, oh, this this a hater. You making this up. You just can't stand my shine. You can't stand that somebody complimenting me. You can't stand that I'm getting the attention and it ain't you. People just, they are like that. Not everybody, but some. And the very people that spread this net, this net for you, they are the first ones when something goes down with you to destroy you. They are the first one. They the first one to expose you. The very people that lift you up and compliment you. Look how flaky people are. And you are not even at celebrity status. None of us are. But look how flaky they get with celebrities. You'll see these people big these people up, talk about their awesome marriage, talk about their money, talk about their movie, their rap album, and everything. But the minute one of them get caught in a scandal, 
The minute it's an affair, they hit the fan. The minute one of them, you find out they doing drugs, you found out they going to jail, they did some, committed some type of crime or did something illegal, then the main ones that was flattering them and lifting them up, they'll be like, oh, I figured that was going to happen. Listen to his songs. Listen to her songs. The way you get them is the way you lose them. Oh, she got him because he got a whole bunch of baby mamas, but she knew that. Y'all, initially, you pump them up. Like, sis, I'm so happy for you. I love, you know, happiness look good on you. Oh, God bless this couple. Couple goals. God bless they new baby. But the very thing you said jokingly, these flatterers, they'll come and remind you of something you said in a joking matter two, three, four, five years ago. Girl, she said she like her dark meat on the side. He should have knew. That's why I'm not surprised he divorced and her. Oh, but wait, but wait, but wait. When they got together and when they got married, you said you was happy for her. You said happiness looked good on her. You said that their marriage was couple goals. Now that stuff didn't hit the fan and now you hearing a report of this scandal. Now you bringing to the forefront something she said five or six years ago. People will use any little thing against you. Something that you just said, making a joke. They will bring that up to try to dishonor and discredit you. People are flaky. And this is why I tell you, don't get caught up. Don't get caught up. Baby, don't get lost in the sauce. Don't get lost in the sauce. Stay humble. Remain humble. Always remember where God brought you from. But always understand that no matter how high you go up, God can still bring you down to nothing. God can bring you down to nothing. The very things God blessed you with and gave you, he can take it away at any moment. And I need you all to know that and I need you to understand that. Just know the difference. But to me, I can't speak for y'all, but again, if somebody's overly complimenting me and saying stuff and they don't know me like that, that's a red flag to me. I'm like, yeah, this person is not authentic. It's really not authentic what they saying. So, that's it, guys. So now I'm going to leave it open. I'm done with the lesson. I'm leaving it open if you guys want to ask questions. Some of you all may have already asked questions, and I have not answered it. So what you all do in live when you're asking questions, if I don't respond, keep putting the same question. Because when I'm done with the lesson, I get back to it. Julene, thank you so much. Dory, thank you. Sarah, I feel you. You said it's warfare. A spiritual warfare, the principalities, the spirit, who now works. Self-defense, therefore, is a virtue. A spiritual self-defense, absolutely. Absolutely. James, I hear you. Know them by their fruits, this is true. Yep. Very true. So I wanted to tell everyone who has come up here to join the live, thank you all so much. If you have subscribed, thank you so much. If you have shared this, thank you so much. If you have joined my membership, thank you so much. I appreciate all the love. I appreciate all the support. Um, but I just want you all to take this lesson. And I want you to meditate on it. I want you to pray about it. You always take it back to God. And... Um, you make sure that when you take it back to God, ask God to give you the discernment. Ask God to open up your spiritual eyes. Because I hear a lot of people, they say, well, I don't know how to discern. But I feel like this. Um, people have what you call intuition and you have insight. So like you can be around someone and they're doing or saying something and you start to feel uncomfortable depending on what it is 
you just like something is not right i'm not feeling comfortable that is <clears throat> that could be sometimes your discernment that's your spirit that's your intuition letting you know okay something is off here something is off here but a lot of people they ignore it they ignore it and they don't pay attention to it you know what i mean they don't pay attention to it they feel like oh it's not a big deal that's not what it is that's not that's not what it is and you all throw it over your shoulder but actually that is what it is that is what it is. Patrice, thank you so much. Yeah. And I agree with you, James, too. When you said you could tell by somebody's tone. That is very true. Because I remember it was a young lady. Um, this is when I was training children to be what you call junior deacons. And th those were just ordained deacons. But they were young they were not grown and so we had a catechism and um i had trained them and the catechism went went really well and we had a whole celebration and service crossing them over and so i remember weeks after that i was in the bathroom at church coming out the bathroom and i ran into one of the young ladies that was the the deacon the junior deacon and she was just going on and on and on just about this great teacher i was and yeah you get us right you get us right and you know yeah we owe you everything and da -da -da -da. like seriously i won't even go deep into other stuff she was saying but she was just going all off on the deep end and just in the midst of her talking and flattering and overly complimenting, saying stuff, it just came to me so clear. This is not authentic. And it was just to the point that it was so fake, I ended the conversation. I just ended it. I was like, yeah, well, you know, I got to go. I got to go drop off, blah, blah, blah. I got to go. I was so disturbed by it that I cut the conversation short. And so that's why I'm telling you guys, I don't pay attention. Moods H90, I, I see you. Thank you. But yeah, yeah, that you know what I'm saying? That's what you all have to know. Just be careful. Because you know what? People feel like arrogance comes when you get material possessions. People, this is another myth. And I came to this realization a very long time ago. People really believe that someone can be humble. They can start off being humble. And once they start to acquire certain things, they get puffed up and arrogant. They get a house or a particular house. They get a car or a particular car. They get a fine man or a fine woman. They get more degrees. They get um accolades they get titles they get positions they make a certain amount of money and they get arrogant but you know what i found out guys simply being flattered can make somebody arrogant it will pump somebody's head up and like i said it will turn them into a monster and it's the ugliest spirit you will ever see so what other word hey so what other word can you put up the scripture from proverbs chapter 29 verse 5 can you put that up here in the chat please keep your head up thank you my sister but um yes i've seen it being overly complimented and over you know overly flattered it has turned people very arrogant very arrogant so you got to know the difference always stay humble even after this lesson just in your life period it has to be a lifestyle of humility and when i talk about that it doesn't mean that you take away and discount yourself you don't take away what you've accomplished in your life you it's just not taking a, being humble does not take anything away from you I know a lot of people feel like that. People feel like, nah, it's my season to really turn up. I've been humble long enough. 
you've been humble long enough so in your mind you feel like humility it's a time frame it's a time limit no your entire life you need to be humble no it's not no you're gonna be humble for two or three months and then after that you become a butthole and start thinking you superior and above people no that's not how this goes you're supposed to always be humble so I've seen some people turn into complete monsters strictly from compliments. They can't even handle criticism. You say something to them and criticize them and you tell them, you know what? You need to stop doing this. You know what? You need to stop doing that. Oh, you a hater. I don't want to hear that. You being negative. You know, you can constructively criticize somebody and they look at you and say that you're being um, negative. Or people will say you're mean. You don't even have to cuss at them. You don't have to curse. You don't have to raise your voice. You don't have to get disrespectful. You can just tell somebody something. And there are some people that would accuse you of being mean. Because they're not accustomed. Um, Not underscore. Is it cyan? Cyan? What? what are furries i don't i don't i don't i'm sorry i don't know what you're referring to when you're asking me that well yeah guys don't let somebody spread a net for you don't let them spread a net faith over over fear thank you so much let me read you guys the scripture because i don't have my bible with me that's why i asked soul of the word but faith over fear thank you so much so guys listen proverbs 29 verse 5 a man who flatters his neighbor spreads a net for his feet a man who flatters his neighbor in this sense to flatter is to excessively praise or give attention to a neighbor absolutely faith over fear with hoping of gaining influence or status yes absolutely so i told you guys that they want to gain influence or status yes so they flatter you they want to gain some type of influence that's why i say they'll try to control you they'll start getting comfortable trying to come at you down the pipeline saying certain stuff to you they'll throw shade at you they say certain things so not underscore cyan or cyan you said they are people who dedicate their life to animal suits which costs one to two thousand dollars i don't think anything about it honestly no disrespect to you for asking a question but i don't think anything about a furry if people want to pay one to two thousand dollars and dress up in an animal suit i guess that's their own business i wouldn't do it personally but i mean if that's what they want to do and Sarah, I see you. You said they'll gaslight you. Yeah, they do that too. They do that too. So, yeah. Like I said, guys, I am um, done with that. Before I head up out of here, let me say my hellos to everybody. Moves H90, you said, sometimes I sense people think I am arrogant because I just say thank you to a compliment and keep it moving. I worry that they are planning to cause me problems should I worry. I don't think you should worry. No, you did your job. You told them thank you. What do people expect you to say? When they compliment you, you can say thank you or I appreciate you. That's sweet of you to say. That's nice of you to say. Keep it moving. You don't have to give somebody your kidney because they told you you were attractive. Or they told you you were handsome. Or they told you you were beautiful or intelligent or anointed. Or you got a nice body. Whatever. Whatever they compliment telling you. Just know. And you know what, guys? I almost forgot. I want to pray with you all. I want to pray with you all. I totally, I don't know how that slipped past me. Indigo. Hi. You said how to balance when someone is honoring you versus flattery and setting those healthy boundaries. Indigo, I, like I said, you would have to go to the playback, but I'll just briefly touch on it again. Um, 
you can balance it because when it becomes excessive it's one thing if i tell you right now indigo sis you are so cute you are beautiful okay and i leave it at that and you say thank you kiki I appreciate you. You beautiful too, or whatever. Because sometimes somebody will compliment you and you give one back. That's that's fine. No, not, nothing negative or to be concerned. I do that all the time. You all come and say nice things, and a lot of you all encourage me and uplift me, and, and I do the same to you. And it's really authentic coming from me. And I do believe when you all say it to me, I believe that it's authentic with a lot of you all. But indigo when it becomes excessive that same person that told you you so cute then they turn around again yes girl you are stunning you are flawless and girl everything you doing i like i just want to be just you know what i'm saying it's just excessive excessive come on come on indigo people not into you like that maybe some but you know you set the boundary because you just watch what you tell that person you just got to be careful with your interaction. Because sometimes the flattery is a setup. They doing it because it's something else that they trying to do. It's another motive there. Okay, so what other word you said, for neither at any time did we use flattering words, as you know, nor a cloak for covetousness. God is witness. Okay. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 5. Keeping it 100, people think I'm arrogant because I stated myself. That's not arrogance. Keeping it 100, don't be concerned. They could think, let them think whatever they want. People think certain stuff about me. They be up here asking me stupid questions. They try to get personal. If I'm in the house, people will be like, why was you on live this long? If I'm in my car, people will be like, why you in your car? Uh, Because I'm grown. I could record or go live anywhere I want. I don't even understand why are you fuck you worried about the wrong thing. Because if I was in a strip club doing it, would they question me? Like people be worried about stupid stuff. And I don't even have to give you that response. It's crazy. It's weird. So of the word, a lying tongue hates those who are crushed by it. And a flattering mouth works ruin. Yes, Proverbs 26, 28. Absolutely. A rice. Hey. So what other word? Thank you so much. Continue. Continue. Because when people come to this playback, I want them to see those scriptures. I don't have my Bible with me. But the, even those of you outside of soil of the word, put those scriptures up here. Please. I invite you. Because people come back. They come back and they see these playbacks. And I want them to be able to see it. Let me pray with you guys really quick before I head out. So wherever you are, if you want to lift up your hands, lift up your hands. If you want to close your eyes and bow your head, you can do that. If not, you can just keep your eyes open. But I just want to pray for you all real quick. Father God, I come today with your sons and your daughters and we thank you lord we thank you for this day we thank you for covering and protecting us protecting our homes protecting our children protecting our families father god i ask you today to strengthen the discernment of your sons and daughters in the body of christ i pray and i ask you lord in jesus name to make them very very sensitive to the spirit of discernment and open up the ears of your sons and daughters where they can recognize a flattering tongue reveal to your sons and daughters father those who are trying to spread a net for their destruction or demise and lord i ask you to continue to lead and guide your children those who may not understand or have full clarity on what is going on in this season of their life. I ask you, Father, to touch every single one on this live, even those who will come back to the playback, Lord. Touch them and do something new in their life and bring all of their gifts that you have placed in them to the forefront. Father, make them more confident and aware of what their gifts are. There are some of your children right now, Lord, that are in this chat and who will view this playback. They are not clear on what their call and purpose is. But I ask you, Father, to give them the clarity 
and begin to speak to them and show them and reveal to them who they are in you. If any one of your sons or daughters have been destroyed or manipulated or they are being controlled by the spirit of flattery, Father, I ask you to break the ungodly tie and the demonic ungodly connection. And I ask you, God, to continue to protect them from the plot, plan, and scheme of the enemy. And Lord, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. And we thank you, Father, for stepping in and doing or finishing some of the things that we don't have the power, the knowledge, or the strength to do. We thank you and we praise you, Father. I ask you all these things in Jesus' name. I pray. Amen. So, that's what it is, guys. Hey, K-Smooth. Hey. How are you, baby? I'm shocked to see you here. I didn't think you would be up here. Patrice, you're asking me why do people... Why do I think people are so comfortable being in others' business or telling them what to do? Because some people, they like being in control. Some people, they feel good. They feel secure. They feel better when they are able to control other people. But if you pay attention, Patrice, there are some people, um, they try to control people that they think are weak. If you give any type of weakness off or vulnerability, there are some people who want to control you. If you are a submissive person, hear me when I say this, hear me. I'm not talking about a submissive wife. I'm just saying if you have a submissive personality and disposition, there are some people who will try to control you. Because sometimes when you are teachable, I use that word a lot, when you are teachable, okay, and when you are easygoing or when you are nice, people will look at that as you're dumb or you're stupid or you're weak and they will try to take advantage of you and they will try to control you so you all need to be aware of that but like i said nalisa you are so welcome sweetheart i praise god i praise god for it um hey david but they try to control people that they think are weaker notice people that are controlling or abusive they don't do it to somebody that's strong really strong oh they'll try to though they will try and it's a lot of people they hate a strong person they hate a confident strong unbreakable type of person they will try to put you in positions where they can break you or where they can mistreat you but some people with flattery you know what they become confident <clears throat> strictly off compliments <clears throat> some people they do that loki hi they will do that they will try to some people they don't have confidence they don't feel good in their self with their self they are not secure but people complimenting them telling them they fine telling them they pretty they beautiful they sexy they body on point they they a go-getter they they are um a boss because you know we use that a lot oh you're top tier you're high value oh you're a boss i want to be a boss just like you sometimes that make them feel it's 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 a false sense of security and confidence a lot of these people that y'all probably think be confident open up your eyes open up your discernment they really not confident like that they only confident when they're getting complimented but see who really are you without all the accolades that's why i said some of these very people that you might think is so confident and they so secure take away their car take away their car take away they one one uh 100k that they make a year take away their crib take away their man take away their woman let them get fat let them put on some weight or something happen to them to where they can't go to the gym um you'll see a whole nother person but see, baby, you confident when you don't even have none of this stuff. It, you get it, okay? But if it's taken away, baby, you still know who you are. Knowing who you are is internal. 
I'm telling you all that. And I say that boldly. When I was a homeless woman in the shelter, you still couldn't tell me nothing. And I say that with the utmost, highest level of humility. I, you have to know who you are, baby. It's internal. It's priceless. It cannot be bought. It, this thing internally is given by God. It can't be faked. See, I know who I am. I don't care who tried to do what to me. I don't care what nobody got to say about me. I don't care what they think about me. It's internal. You can't be broken by somebody that follow God and you got a connection to God. People could try to do whatever. It's internal. I know who I am. And even if it is some areas of myself that I don't know, baby, God will show me. I'll find out eventually. You got to know who you are. <clears throat> you got to know who you are in God. I know who I am in God. I know who God created me to be, what he designed me to be. I know why I am on this earth. I know what I am called to do. I don't care nothing about money, house, car, position, title. It's internal. It's internal. Y'all keep thinking this stuff is deeper. It ain't deep. It ain't about your hair. Who cares? It's not about your body. It's women that's bald. And baby, you can't tell them nothing. It's people that's standing on the bus stop. And baby, you can't tell them nothing because they know who they are. That's why some people will hate you. That's why they will attack you. Because they see some, but they don't know what they see. They be like, wait, but she in the shelter. But has she got her head up? And what, baby, it's internal. I don't have to tell you internally what it is. Oh, I'm going to guard a lot of my anointing. I, I throw some pieces out there. You don't need to know everything. But you better know it's internal. I'm not in the dark about who I am and God. Period. K-Smooth, you still up here? <laughs> I'm going to get you. Anthony Heard, Ban, I see you. I see you. Arnetta, you said you didn't just stumble on this word, and I'm happy, sis, that you're here. I'm happy you didn't either. <clears throat> Marie, you are welcome. Brianna, I hear you. I see you. I see you, baby. Laura, Cole, I see you. Yeah, you said those who try to control someone are those who are really insecure. Absolutely. And James, I see you. I see everything you putting up here, James. I see you. I see y'all. I'm, I'm trying to answer everything. Romero, I see you still up here. Maud still up here. I see all of y'all. Keep it at 100. Yep, don't get caught up in the sauce. Y'all got to know. You got to know who you are. K-Smooth, I'm really going to get you. Because I'm, I'm shocked that you're up here. Usually you pop in and out. You pop in and out, but we gonna talk. I'm 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 gonna get you. Y'all go follow K Smooth. He shows a lot of love. I love him. Ruben, I see you. I see you. But Ruben, what do I do for a living? What you see me doing now? Are you asking me that question because you want like deep details or are you trying to be sarcastic? See, I don't know. I don't know how to take some of y'all. So I just give you a basic answer, what you see me doing now. That's my job today. I might have a, a different job every day of the week. But today, right now, on Saturday, what's today? September what? It's sept I don't even know. Is it the 17th, the 16th? No, it's the 16th. September 16th, 2023. Ruben, you know what my job is? Today, right now, to go live. That's my job. That's my job. And I'm doing it for free. Where my check? I ain't even getting a check. I ain't even getting a check, man. I ain't even had lunch. That's illegal. When you at work, you supposed to get a 15. You supposed to get two breaks. You supposed to get 45 minute, one hour break. And you supposed to get like two 15 minute breaks. 15 plus 15 is 30. Come on, man. Oh my God. Moods H90. Thank you so much. Y'all crazy. Said drip. So why did you come up here and say, how does one stop wetting the bed? Y'all are weird. Y'all are weird. Y'all just, boy. Oh Lord. 
sower of the word, thank you so much for all the scriptures. And anybody else who puts scriptures up here, thank you so much. I appreciate you all. I most definitely do. I most definitely do. So guys, before I get out, did you all have any other questions? Like I said, you can ask me questions, but don't come up here trying to be sarcastic. Don't try to be funny. Because as you all see, I'm deleting some of these questions. and these See, this is why I started a membership. Because it's people that come up here and they real immature. They real silly. And it's probably people that don't care for me. They send these people up here. They share my stuff. They want to laugh. They want to crack jokes. They want to discredit and dishonor you and be like, you know, they get into a lot of other stuff. And it's like, why waste your time? This this is just why I caused the separation. I had to because of stuff like this. John, I see you. Thank you so much. People are weird. Michelle, I hear you. Ruben. <laughs> Ruben, thank you. <laughs> Ruben, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Now, you just made me chuckle doing that. Romero, I see you. Case move, are you leaving now, sweetheart? Like I said, guys, go go love. Go follow Case Move. He shows a lot of love. He's cool. Case move, he raps, y'all. I think I saw like a video of him, like a clip. Because it's so many of you all that follow me. So I, I can't watch all of y'all stuff. But there's some people up here, you all. Uh, do music and they rap and stuff and K Smooth he um he raps he does his thing so y'all go check him out but yeah guys like I said I <clears throat> people are just weird up here but that's okay because I know how to keep it under control I know I'm gonna keep it under control I don't like negativity I don't like when people try to you know they try to humiliate you they try to embarrass you they try to be funny but you know a lot of y'all that's coming in my comment section saying certain stuff you'll have your time you reap what you sow <laughs> you know where you been but you don't know where you going you be trying to throw shade at people and say little stuff that's why i say you got to be careful how you talking to people you got to be careful what you putting out here you got to be careful what you saying you don't know nobody's situation you just don't know and guess what you're not entitled to know their business Y'all be too nosy. I'm not asking y'all. I don't dig into y'all personal business. Now, if it's a one-on-one, -on -one, that's a whole nother level of something. Because it's behind the scenes. That's private. Any one-on-one -on -one I have is private. It's private. Any email that's sent to me, all that stuff is locked. It's Trump tight. It ain't getting out. It ain't leaking. You better believe that. You better believe that. But yeah, I just don't understand y'all. But this little stuff y'all put out, baby, today is Saturday, September 16, 2023. You don't know where you're going to be Saturday, September 16, 2024. You don't even know where you're going to be on the 16th of October. Your life can change in a split second. Watch what you out here saying to people. Watch what you out here asking. Watch how you trying to dig into people's personal life. Like, seriously. But how would y'all feel if some, I started asking y'all real personal questions like, who you live with? Where you live at? How much money you make? How much do you weigh? Well, how old are you? Let me see your driver's license. Put, put your driver's license up here. Let me see your social security number. How many kids you got? What's their name? What school they go to? Ruben, you said what time is it in Chicago? What time is it, guys? 2.18 p.m. Mr. Hoodie 72, you said what's the membership qualifications? Is is none. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. Thank you, Dory. When you click on the link, Mr. Hoodie, it should tell you. You you should see it up there. Dory. She got a laughing emoji. Ban. House of Manasseh. Proverbs 27, verse 1, King James Version. Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. Thank you so much for putting that up here. Crucialness TV. Thank you. God's son, I see you. I see you. How are you? 
I hope you're doing really good, God, son. I really hope you are. I hope your spirits are lifted. I hope you are having a wonderful weekend. I hope you've been smiling this week. I hope you feel energized and revitalized. I hope you've been praying. And you in Jamaica. Man, I wish I was over there because y'all see it's raining, y'all. It's raining in Chicago. But I love it. When it rain here in Chicago, I love it. Because it keep the, the hood people in the house. They don't be coming outside trying to act the fool and being in rare form. When that rain come, they run. They go in the house. Arnetta Parker. Oh, wow, sis. Yes, yeah, start it. Start it, sis. Start it. Mr. Hoodie, thank you. Th you know what? I want to thank you all that, that are joining my memberships. Thank you all so much. Thank you all. I really appreciate you all. You know, it's, it's, it's doing okay. It's, it's doing okay, but I had to do it because you all see some of the comments that people make. They get real nasty up here. They say stuff to me. God bless them, though. I don't have nothing. I, I put out good stuff. Anybody that got something negative to say, you want to ask me these questions because I guess you called yourself trying to front me off or get people to laugh or entertain them or y'all sharing this purposely for the wrong reason so y'all can sit back and cackle god bless you i hope if you are sick in your body that god heals you everything out of, out of alignment in your body i pray in jesus name and all seriousness that god puts everything out of order in your body cancer diabetes high blood pressure anything you going through anything lupus anything you going through physically with your health I, I i speak nothing but blessings to you financial breakthrough healing and restoration with the relationship with your husband with your wife with your children a better job i pray that god opens up a door for any one of you who has a job that you hate i decree and declare god will open up a door for you to get a higher paying job and a better job that will change your life and the lives of your family members in jesus name i i send nothing but positivity back to those who hate me and i really mean it i'm not even trying to be sarcastic or funny because you got to be a very hateful person to try to humiliate or embarrass somebody you want to know certain information so you could use it and dishonor that person like but how you saying this but you ain't got this or you ain't do yeah yeah you got to be a hateful because who has time to do that? You think I got time to sit up here and go on somebody's platform that I don't know in real life. They haven't done anything to me, but I'm just going to go in their live and just call them out of their name. I'm going to talk about their weight. I'm going to talk about why you recording right there or why you look like this or why your camera not here. We want to see the full body. I'm saying stupid stuff that ain't got nothing to do with the lesson coming from the spirit of the Lord. You're worried about the wrong thing. <laughs> Y'all are weird. People are weird to me. I'm not lying. I go to God like, God, why are some human beings weird? They're weird. Maud, I'm serious. I am so serious. Mr. Hoodie, I know I know some of y'all. I know y'all got my back. Michelle, I see you. I see you. How you pronounce your last name, Michelle? Is it Dark Intel? I don't want to ask your last name, my sister. Samantha, I see you. I love you too. But I'm telling y'all, y'all don't understand. I just, oh my God. Oh, Dory, I know what they up here doing. But you see, I'm good. I, I send blessings back to them. I don't want to be a bitter, angry person. Do y'all know how that feels to be like angry? I don't like it. I told y'all my cheeks start turning red. My neck start turning red. When I get like really, really pissed off, it's, it becomes an ugly sight. I don't, I don't like it. My head be throbbing like, uh-uh, nope, nope, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. Mm-mm. I'm not, I'm not doing it. I don't like it. When you get real mad with some people, like I said, I start turning red, okay? Y'all already see my skin tone with red, kind of tangent yellow undertones, like, and my tan fully ain't even gone. But I just don't, I don't, I don't like, I don't want to be loud and angry. I don't want to fight. Now, if I have to defend myself, that's another conversation. But I don't want to be that. 
When you are a man or a woman of God, you have to walk in the spirit of excellence. You have to walk with the spirit of grace. You can't be out here fighting people and threatening people and screaming and hollering. You can't talk a certain way. You cannot. You can't just be freely saying what you want to people. You, it has to be a spirit of excellence. Because you're going to be in the kingdom of God. You are going to be in a position where you are in certain rooms. God blesses you and you are in certain rooms with prestigious people or other men and women of God. And it may be one day that that one particular man or woman of God, God is using him as a vessel to bless you. But if you say the wrong thing and you have the wrong attitude and the wrong disposition and you a nasty person, you will mess up everything. So you have to make it a habit. Samantha, I'm telling you, they wow, Patrice, I'm telling you. So are other words. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And it took me a very long time to get here. And sometimes I still don't get it right, y'all. I still don't. People will try you. They will try you. But God really deals with me. He deals with me. I'm He deals with me. God will wake me up at 3, 4, 5 o'clock in the morning. And I know he'll be dealing with me. It's, it's, it's wild. I promise y'all, no lie, no joke. And so what I'm saying is that you have to walk in the spirit of excellence because you don't know who is watching you. People are watching you. And sometimes, you know, I don't want you all to take that the wrong way and take it and be scared because all of us are being watched. Somebody is watching us and it goes beyond you being on a platform. It's just people are watching you, period. And so sometimes how you conduct and carry yourself um, as a leader, okay, you have to remember that if you talk a certain way or you even treat people a certain way, that that would possibly taint the, the, the perception that the person who's watching you for inspiration, how they perceive you. And this is why you always should try your best to walk in the spirit of excellence and grace. You know, and Indigo, you are right. A lot of people don't know that about me, but you do know. So I know you've been here for some time. You all look at what Indigo said, because I'm, I'm going to go back to other questions and comments. She said, that's why at the end of every video, you let us know we might be mad, but we should get over it by the morning. That is so true. I say I have my intro, I have my outro. When I tell you all, if any one of you have been offended by anything I spoke about in this video message, it's okay, it's all right. I'm not worried about it. I am not concerned because I know you will forgive me in the morning. That's real because people are flaky. People are up and down. It's people that are hate me today. They don't like me. And then tomorrow morning, they'll forget all about what I did the day before. You all do it with other people in your life. Because you, when you sit and really think about why am I mad at Kiki for simply telling the truth, for coming with a scripture from the word of God, this is not her opinion. She's coming with what God is telling all of us as a body. Or, or, or I may not say something to your liking or whatever. You don't like my delivery 100%, but it's dumb stuff. People will get mad at you like you cuss them out or you call them out of their name or you threaten them. It's never deep. It's never deep, but whatever. I ain't finna wear myself out. I'm a human being. You're going to see mistakes and flaws, and that's just what it is at the end of the day. That is just what it is, honey. I promise y'all, I can't worry about it. I can't please everybody. I cannot make everybody happy. I cannot. I just can't do it. You know what I'm saying? Be I, I, I can't. No matter what you do, somebody's going to find fault. They're going to complain about it. And that's just it. So anyway, guys, I'm going to head out. Let me tell you all again, I love all of you all. Thank all of you for the support. If you have shared this live, I appreciate you. Congratulations and welcome to all of my new members. I, I, I thank all of you all for joining um, I thank all of you all for being here. Thank you for the encouragement. Thank you all for the support. For those of you who are new here, um, you know what? Let me say this too before I leave. A lot of you all who are new here that don't really know 
for the most part my personality um let me tell you when you look into my community tab i decided uh, a couple of weeks ago that i want to put what you call um i explained it at the beginning of this live but i'm gonna explain it again i have broke down and explained that at the beginning um of the live that once a week i want to share a chuckle post and the reason i decided to start doing that is because part of my personality this is why i'm telling you all i am a silly person I crack jokes, I roast people, but I do it more so with family members. We do this. It, it, it is high level roasters in my family. My brother is one of them. My son, my brother, and it's a couple other people. We can roast. And for those of you who don't know, a roast session is just when you just off the top of your head, you come with jokes to roast somebody, but it's all in fun and it's all in love. And so up here, because I'm not in the spirit, every day 100 percent every day all day i want to do what you have what you call some comic relief and i will share a post that is lightweight and that is funny because every day you're not deep i'm not deep and spiritual every day some days i'm silly just all day i'm i'm literally laughing and cracking jokes or looking at something that's funny and so I need you all to get over it. Stop demonizing it. Stop spiritualizing it. Like I said, thank you, Danny. He said the dozens. Yes. It's like, like seriously, it's, it's, it's called the dozens. And I love it. I'm a good sport. I'm not one of the people. Some people get mad when you crack jokes and say stuff. I don't. I'll sit there. If it's a corny joke, I'd be like, oh, that was whack. That's corny. Try again. But then if it's something funny, I'm going to laugh. You know what I'm saying? Arnetta, thank you, sweetie. It's some people, I'm going to tell y'all. I know y'all finna laugh when I tell y'all this. There are some people, they'll um, crack jokes. A lot of people stop me. Now, I know y'all not going to believe this, but this is the truth. People will stop me and be like, hey, sis, you look like Jill Scott. Okay, this has been happening to me for many years. I've been in restaurants. I've been downtown here in Chicago. And for those of you who want to know where I'm from, I told you all I am... Uh, in Chicago, Illinois, born and raised. Um, I have been in restaurants. People have been staring at me, chuckling, pointing. I've been walking down the street. People then walked up on me like, ma'am, I'm sorry. I know you don't know me, but I just want to tell you, you look like Jill Scott. Now, I don't feel we look alike. Do we have maybe favor with the smile and the high cheek, the like high cheekbones? Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Okay, fine. But then it's like a family member. They might crack a joke and be like, nah, you know, Kiki, you don't look like Jill Scott. You look like um, a, a cheap version of Jill Scott. Or you look like the broke version of Jill Scott. They'll say something like that. I don't get mad at that. It's a corny joke. Now, and they mad, they'll be cracking up thinking it's hilarious. It's corny. You could have came better than that. You could have came better than that. David, yes, my weasels and tweezels. You know? So it's like I will share that in the community tab. But there's some people that take it deep. Like I said, a woman came up there, and I'm going to tell you, I blocked her. My sister, I don't know if you're watching. I don't really want to come off mean like that. But you're not going to demonize and spiritualize nothing I post. Because there was not one thing that was inappropriate about what I posted with that apple. With the the light skin Michael Jackson and then the, the dark skin. Ver he, it wasn't even that he was dark. He was brown skin. He was a dark brown skin color. Okay? And you know if you take an apple and you bite it, it's white. And if you sit it down on the table and you walk off, 10 or 15 minutes later, you come back, it be brown. That's all it was. Okay, the fact that Michael Jackson face was there, because people used to talk about how different he started to look from the 70s and 80s versus the 90s and the early 2000s before he passed away. Okay, baby, get over it. Get over it. It was funny. Laugh at the joke, eat the fish, spit out the bone. This lady came up there. I'm disappointed at you. I mean, is this the direction you're going with your channel? So, okay, so the direction you feel I'm going with my channel is to make Michael Jackson jokes. Okay, I guess. So, Andy B, I see you. You said, oh, you said you had to look her up. Okay. 
Keeping it 100, absolutely. Why need a souls? Thank you. Go get your praise on and send up a prayer for me. I love you too. Yeah, pe people, man. Uh-uh. And then there was a guy when I showed y'all the picture uh, where they said I looked like Jill Scott. People, it was one dude that came up there at me. Girl, please, you don't look like no Jill Scott. Okay, but if you didn't think that, you should have just moved on with your life. Why are you coming in the comment section? Y'all waste a lot of unnecessary time. Just like I said, people would be like, yeah, I, I agree with this that you said. But whether you agree or disagree, why do it? Is it comment worthy? Is it comment worthy? Look, Mr. Hoodie, you said peel sky. <laughs> now, that's funny. Yeah, I, I'm not Jill Scott, but Peel Scott. Yeah, man, that's what they say. I didn't been told I look like several people. Believe it or not, people will be like, I look like Janet Jackson. Maybe I'm just a heavier version. But people have said that too. Like, you know what? You look like Janet Jackson. Before she got her nose surgery, because her nose is like really pointy. I think her nose is like, but my I have a little nose. Like my father. I have a little nose. My father had a little nose. My mother's nose was bigger. It was like wider. But my father had like medium sized, smaller lips, little nose. But whatever. But some people feel like I look like Janet Jackson. I don't. I don't really see the resemblance. I don't. And I think like with Jill Scott, because of our smell and our hair, I think Jill is lighter than me. Okay. Uh... I don't know. And you know, the, like I said, the high cheekbones, maybe. Um, I'm built differently than her. Her breasts are a lot bigger than mine. She's more heavier in the chest area than I am. I could tell you that hands down. So I just think with things of that nature, just the fact that I'm plus size, somebody will look at that and be like, oh yeah, you look like that person. That's fine because I don't take offense. Jill Scott is a beautiful woman. She's an attractive woman. Janet Jackson is a beautiful woman. So, you know, I don't take offense. Yes. Patrice, thank you so much. Ban House of Manassa, look, he, I see y'all putting up laughing emojis. I am so serious, though. I'm literally serious. I've been told I look like Janet Jackson, Jill Scott. Somebody came and said that I look like Tootie. I told y'all this before. They say I look like Tootie from the Facts of Life. How, where did they even get that from? How do I look like Tootie from the Facts of Life? There's literally nothing about me that looks like that girl that played on the, which her name is Kim Fields, by the way, in real life. I'm like, what? I, I guess. Then somebody was like, I look like Janelle Monet. I don't know where that came from. I don't look nothing like no Janelle Monet. Now, see, stuff like that, I'd be like, yeah, now you way off with that one. Whatever. So yeah, I've I've heard that Janelle Monet, Janet Jackson, Jill Scott, uh, who else? I think that's about it. I think that's about it. Nobody else. Nobody else. So guys, y'all enjoy the rest of y'all weekend. Continue to pray for me. I'm gonna pray for you all. Welcome to all of my new members. Thank you all for your memberships. I appreciate all of you all. James Christ Conscious, thank you so, so much. Crucial Nest TVs. Okay, you guys are seeing my facial structure, right? Produced by AdWords. Okay, you said it's the natural look. T. Washington. God bless you too. Thank you, Prince. Prince put up some more pictures on Instagram today. I want, I want, I want you to put five new photos today on Instagram. I'm coming. I'm gonna come at some of y'all on Instagram. Y'all, y'all accept me. Y'all request me on Instagram, and some of y'all, y'all don't have no photos. It be like blank, and so I don't accept it. Now, Prince, I know him because Prince, like, actually said something. I asked him. But it's a couple of y'all I think that's waiting. And I'm letting you know, if I haven't accepted it, it's because you don't have a photo. 
it looks weird i don't know it just looked like a scammer page it looked fake to me it looked weird so i'd be like yeah no no i i don't know so y'all gotta let me know you better email me and be like no nah, miss kiki that's me i requested you on instagram i just don't have no photos you know what i'm saying because i know some people they um isaac i see you a rice okay that's what i need to be doing a rice go take a walk it's raining now though but yeah um i'm not going to accept the instagram if 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 it's um it's just no photos because it just looks suspect to me it looks really weird so nah i wouldn't accept it now if you guys tell me that that's you then that's a different story mr hoodie you laughing <laughs> y'all up here laughing at me yes 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 but yeah guys so y'all be good i'm gonna see you all soon the lord willing y'all stay cool and dry but that weather that weather breaking now though everybody back in their jackets now oh mr hoodie you have a blessed day too well, no, it ain't blessed when I get in the bed. I need to be in the house and go to sleep. Mr. Hoodie, I've been up for a very long time. I had to wake up at the crack of dawn today because I had to go to O'Hare Airport. I literally had to drop somebody off at O'Hare Airport. It was a family member. And um, I, oh my God, y'all know anybody that's in Chicago, you know Midway and O'Hare Airport, it ain't no joke. Like if you have to take a flight, you need to get there two or three hours ahead of your flight. And people don't like to drive their own car. So, like, if it's a family member or a friend, they'll ask you to drop them off because they don't want to drive their car because they're not going to pay for parking and they don't want to pay a sky-high amount for a Lyft or a Uber. But even the person that's driving, dropping a person off, is still a lot of work because it's so many people going out of town or coming back in town. So, traffic is crazy is crazy it is so crazy and danny you know i'm not lying you know it get real ugly at o'hare airport i think midway might be worse though because midway you could barely pull in on the curve barely so a other word okay and when i log in i'm gonna i'm gonna accept your request so yeah guys Thank you all so much for tuning in. And you all really showed up and showed out today. So I, I appreciate all of you all. I really do. So guys, let me get out of here. Because eventually I think I'm going to have to take a nap. It's still kind of early. Maybe I won't. But like I said, I've been very busy today. I need a break. <laughs> ben, how some of I see you. You have a blessed Sabbath too. <laughs> keep it at 100 i see you danny you said you'd rather use midway yes and that's what i was telling this family member i'm like why you not flying out through midway but they like going to o'hare i can't stand it because they kind of mean at o'hare too they want to cuss they want to yell and i just be sitting there looking at them i don't say nothing I just sit there and let them do whatever and then when it's time for me to drive off and get back on the expressway that's what i do y'all know hey listen i keep trying to tell people that i don't come up here asking y'all what y'all do for a living and where you work at why is that even important why is that a conversation can somebody no seriously i'm not even trying to be funny can somebody answer that why do people ask you what do you do for a living what if i told you i don't have a day job what if i told you i don't have no job would that make you perceive me a different way would you look at me differently like i just don't see what how was that conducive to the conversation? Is any one of you all taking care of me and buying me food, buying me shoes, buying me clothes? You're not. And I don't know why y'all think that everybody up here on YouTube that we these rich people. I don't know where the world getting that from. Literally, I literally don't know where people is getting this stuff from. I don't know why people be assuming that people on YouTube be like filthy rich and be getting all this money. 
Like, I, I don't understand it. But people start to get personal, and it's like, whether I work or not, whether you work or not, what do they have to do with what my job here is? What, like, I just don't understand that. It's weird. It's weird, and you're invading my privacy. Because I don't, I'm not digging into none of y'all life. You know why? Because I don't care. I don't care what none of y'all do. Now, wait, I take that back. I apologize. I actually do care what y'all do. I don't want y'all involved in no mess. I don't want y'all involved in a fornication. I don't want y'all involved in adultery. I don't want y'all out here fighting, being a thief, being just. I don't want y'all in no type of confusion. And if you are in some of the things I name, we going to continue to pray. Because deliverance is real. It's not to judge you. It's just to bring awareness to it. To let you know that Jesus is the breaker also. And he will break and burn some stuff off you that is not godly. So I'm just saying, it's, it's, it's weird. T. Washington, I hear you, but they can't place no value on me. I'm already valuable. I'm valuable because God, he, that's what he created me to do. Every last one of us are valuable. I don't care where you live or who you live with or what you drive. I keep telling you, value is internal. Who you are is internal because if all that is snatched away from you, what you going to do, give up? You going it, it, and I don't know. Tanji, he, you said, what is weird? I'm just saying it's weird when people start asking you a lot of personal questions. I'm not friends with these people. So why do they feel like I owe them to tell them about my personal private life? I don't owe them nothing. I don't have to explain to nobody my personal private life. It's not their business. It's not they literally, it's literally not their business. It's literally not their business. And if they got a problem with it, they can unsubscribe. They can leave. Because, see, they pull this stuff with certain people. They not going on nobody else's platform questioning them about what do you do, where you live, where you, how old are you, and you married that. You don't see them doing this stuff to other people. But they try to pull these stunts with certain people. But I see the spirit behind it in some people. I ain't finna play with them. I ain't, I, I ain't finna play with them. Not at all. Not at all. J.E. Lou, thank you. Thank you so much. Danny, thank you. <laughs> Y'all want to know what I do for a living? Challenge you. That's my job, to challenge the body of Christ. <laughs> That's what I do for it. That's my job title. To challenge the body of Christ. To challenge you. Okay? Thank you, Ben. People got to mind their business. Because people will do this stuff to you, but when you turn the mirror to them, they'll get pissed off. Pissed off. Don't ask me about my husband. Worry about your own man. Do you even got a man? Don't ask me about my wife. Don't ask me nothing about my kids. Don't worry about how much money I make. Baby, they get pissed off the same questions they ask you if you ask them. They would get so mad. You'll be like, hey, let me send you a request. Y'all, when some of y'all be looking at me upside my head, if I be like, I'm finna request you on Facebook. And I'm just scrolling down y'all page. Some of y'all, some people purposely don't tell me they Facebook because I guess they scared. They think I'm gonna see something on their Facebook or Instagram and I'm gonna judge them. I ain't finna judge nothing. People request me. I, they cuss. They post dirty memes. I don't say one word. I, I don't have nothing to say. Ain't no judgment coming from me. Be yourself. Be 100% authentically you. Everybody not gonna be where you are overnight. I'm not even where I am. It didn't happen overnight. And I still got a ways to go. I have not arrived. Just for anybody that's thinking, you know, anything different. So, uh-uh. No, no, no. Mr. Hoodie, thank you so much. Yep, James, it's all the process. People gonna learn with me. People, they gonna, they really gonna learn with me. They not regulating nothing on my platform. I don't care. Expose it. Expose it. Do a side by side. Be like this person, a, fr a false teacher. A false prophet, it's a lot of slander, and they've been doing this for years with just men and women in the body of Christ. They do it all the time. 
they'll do anything to dishonor you. This person can't say this because they ain't got this. This person can't teach this because they ain't even got it. Be a baby, do whatever you want, have fun, but just understand that what you do and what you put out, your turn is next. Your turn is coming. I told you it's cooking in a pot, it's boiling with green peppers and, and onions, tomatoes, and garlic. And it's on high heat. And your baby, your turn. We all get our turn. We all get our turn. That's why I say it's scary when people get real cocky and arrogant. And they be trying to humiliate you. And they be trying to talk about you. And investigate and find out stuff. So they can be like, look. And I, baby, you gonna have your turn. I've seen it too many times. I literally have seen it too many times. And the person that's big on doing that, when they had a turn, it's always uglier than what they put out. When they get exposed and when, when somebody turn up on them, oh my God, you your mouth be open. Like literally, it's like it take a breath from you. You will be like, oh, it's unbelievable. You got to be careful what you out here saying about people. You got to be careful what you out here doing. I'm telling you. If you don't listen to nothing else, be like, well, Kiki did say, don't be quick. Y'all people, this generation, they be so quick. The most exposing generation. Always trying to expose. What are you exposing? See, I don't understand. What is it to expose? Like with certain people, when they be coming out, some of these people having affairs that's married. I just saw so it broke my heart. It was a man of God. I don't know this man of God, but it don't mean he not a man of God because he battled with homosexuality. Somebody in the church that this pastor was, you know, being intimate with. I don't know if him and the man fell out or they got into it, but he he put the sex tape out. It, it, I, it, it's, it's heartbreaking. I hate to see stuff like that. Keep y'all mouth off the men and women of God in the body of Christ. We are one body. We are one body. How dare I or any one of you come up here to a brother and sister? I don't care if they struggling with lesbianism, homosexuality, and then these people in the church, they link up with these pastors. I'm not saying don't expose. The Bible tells us we are supposed to expose certain things, but it's certain things you are supposed to conceal. The Bible also talks about that as well. You cannot zoom in on one scripture and use it because it excites you and it benefits you or you're going to get clout off of it. You got to address everything in the uh, entire Bible if that's the case. But they always quick to zoom in on one scripture, but they forget about all the other ones. Many scriptures talk about how um, love covers a multitude of sin. The Bible talks about concealing a matter. Some things need to be concealed. It's not for you to expose. It's not for you to reveal. People have to learn. You will learn your lesson. You will learn. Everybody get their turn. I'm telling you, they get their turn. Watch what you out here doing. What you putting out. Oh, you want to keep asking people? Making jokes about their age and they weight. Calling them out their name. What you do? Where you work at? And none of that. Yep. And you're going to have somebody that confront you off. And it's going to be when you least expect it. You don't know where you ending up in life. You don't know. You keep thinking the day you the man or you the woman because you got that high paying job and you making all that money. You don't know where you going to be next year. You don't know where you going to be in the next six months. Watch yourself. Humble yourself. Don't be quick to try to be digging and digging because the same thing you doing, somebody could do it to you. Somebody could do it to you. Don't nobody owe you nothing. If people don't trust you, it's because they don't know. You don't know what nobody, you don't know what I've been through. You don't know why I have to cover certain things. You don't know nothing about me. Not to that extent. And I don't owe it to you. You supposed to guard your family. You supposed to guard your privacy. It ain't just me. You too. Y'all letting people come up in your house. You you all up in your house and showing your car, showing all your kids. You steady videotaping your husband and your wife. No, that's not you not using wisdom. You not using wisdom. Thank you, Danny. Pray for those that have rule over you. Touch not my anointed, neither do my prophet no harm. I keep I keep trying to tell people. Isabel White, shout out to you. But like I say, J.E. Lou, yes, I love Geno Jennings. I love him. Yes, sir. Yes, if I live, I think he's in Philadelphia. If I was in Philadelphia, I would be sitting in that man's church, hands down with my head wrap on, with my turban. I absolutely would. 
be right in that man of God's congregation. If I lived over in Africa, I don't even know what part of Africa Joshua Selman live in. That is a very anointed, mighty man of God. I have a high level of respect for him. Say what you want, but I, I kind of like T.D. Jakes. I don't know about his whole catalog, but some of his sermons, it was on point. It touched me spiritually. But pe 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 people could say whatever. Y'all don't know about these men and women of God. Y'all don't know what we going through. Keep your mouth off of us. You don't know what be going on behind the scenes. You don't know. We are supposed to cover certain things. You, you ain't supposed to be exposing and talking about everything. Y'all be wanting people to go too far. They don't owe you nothing. Y'all, keeping it 100, absolutely. Knowledge is power. When you know your power, you move. I keep telling people. And people keep thinking, when you don't tell them certain stuff, you got something to hide. I ain't got no secret. People that know me, that know me, they, they know what's up. They know. It, it, it ain't no secret. It, it ain't nothing to hide. I ain't in no scandal. Just for anybody that's probably thinking like she in a scandal. No, nah, and I ain't never been in one. I said, like real talk. I say that humbly. But I'm just saying because people always think when you private and you're not telling them certain stuff that you're doing it because you scared or you got something. Else. Scared of what? I represent God. I'm under the umbrella of God. I don't have to fear no man. You think these people out here scare me? No, but I'm scared for people that's quick to expose somebody and put their mouth on me and other people. You playing a very dangerous game. These people that's out here doing witchcraft and tarot cards and you think you're going to turn up with me and other people, you are playing a very dangerous game. Woe to you. <laughs> this ain't no game. This is literally not a game. Denarius, hey. Absolutely, I agree with you. I agree with you. So, yeah, Nalisa, absolutely. Andy B, I see you. I see you. So, y'all, let me get up out of here. I might see you all today. I got some more video messages. I got some stuff for my members. But we're going to talk, y'all, okay? Again, I love you. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for joining my memberships. Thank you for sharing. Thank you all for the encouraging words. Thank you for your prayer. Thank you guys so much. So the Lord willing, I will see you all again soon. Hugs and kisses. I love y'all.